What's up YouTube? Today is a very, very special day for the channel because we're doing a 36,000 mile review on the 2018 Camaro ZL1 that I purchased about two years ago, a little over two years ago. Um, I came to the brand from Lexus and a part of today's review is not simply to do the review, but to do the review from a perspective of a 10 year and three car Lexus owner, okay? Before I came to Chevrolet, you guys, I had a uh, Lexus GS350, which I purchased brand new. Uh, I had a Lexus ISF, which was a great car, and that was the car that got me to uh, start heading to the track. I also had a Lexus LS460, which I uh, adored. So I'm coming from, Kind of, or the reviews coming from the perspective of a lot of owners who don't, or a lot of prospective buyers, I should say, who don't trust Chevrolet, let's say, okay? And so I had my, uh, I had my apprehensions about coming to the brand um, after years and years of nothing but uh, Japanese cars. Um, so I'm gonna try and uh, kind of just show some of the prospective buyers out there my personal experience with the car. Um, after owning three Lexuses and literally nothing but Japanese cars my entire life. Now, um, this 2018 ZL1 um, is the uh, non-1LE. It is the 10-speed. Um, I wanted the 10-speed because I was going to be doing a lot of track time with the car. And I wanted the faster uh, lightning, fast shift time, basically, is what I was after. Um, what drew me to this particular car, even after years of nothing but Japanese cars, was the, uh, basically, it was just the, the power, the performance, the technical aspect of the car. The uh, LT4 motor, um, the 10-speed transmission, the electronic limited slip differential, uh, the massive wheel and tire package, um, is basically what drew me to the car. But like many prospective, let's say Chevrolet owners, if you're coming from the German side or the JDM side, right? We're all raised and taught that these cars are not reliable. Uh, my concerns uh, were there when I purchased the car, uh, but I went ahead and did it anyways. And uh, I actually did it basically at the direction of one of our favorite car guys out there, Mr. Jason Camisa, who is Somebody I do talk to every now and then. Um, he's cool enough to kind of respond to my uh, questions on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. And before he left Motor Trend, they did a review on this thing and they absolutely destroyed the car, or tried to, he was telling me. And he said the car was bulletproof. No breakage. So that's effectively what brought me to the brand was Jason Camisa said it was a great car. Uh, it was reliable. Um, I used to track a Lexus ISF very regularly. I actually did 25 track days in an ISF, so pretty familiar with the limits of the uh, Lexus brand and the F cars on the track. Um, so I went ahead and made, made, the, made the purchase, pulled the trigger. Um, after 10 years of Lexus ownership and 37,000 miles in this particular Camaro ZL1, and I want you guys to know I've done 16 track days in two years and two months in this car, um, the car has been absolutely reliable. I've had no breakdowns, no issues, no unplanned visits to the dealership, um, except for a few small issues, and that's what we're gonna get into today. Now, what were those few small issues that I had? In the 37,000 miles and the 16 track days, um, the first problem I had, you guys, was right at about 1,700 miles. It was my first track day. Two things kind of popped up, less than 1,700 miles. The first issue that I had basically was, and I went over this in one of my previous videos, was a very loud clicking noise that you would get when you would make hard left or rights, um, like kind of a U-turn, and it would come from the front end of the suspension here. It was kind of a loud clicking, again, only when the wheel was turned and there was some speed. Um, what we found um, uh, online and through some of the, the, the car forums for the Chevy or the ZL1 is that the, um, there was a myth basically. The first, uh, the first kind of explanation was that there was rust behind uh, the, the contact point behind the wheel and that was causing some of the clicking, uh, but in, the, in reality what, what actually what was going on you guys is from the factory, um, on the earlier 17s and 18s, they weren't, believe it or not, they weren't tightening up the wheels to spec. Most Chevrolets, um, the spec on the wheels, you guys, is 110 pound feet of torque for each of the lugs. Um, what we found was that the, um, the ZL1 is kind of unique. It's 140, and I think that has to do with just the weight of the car, 
the size of the wheels, the amount of force you can put on them, um, that kind of a thing. So what, what we found was the factory effectively wasn't tightening the front wheels or the rear wheels to spec, which was 140. So you'd find the wheels were just slightly loose, which would create that weird kind of clicking noise when you make your uh, hard left or hard right kind of a U-turn. Um, it was very, very easily fixed. You just torque the wheels to spec and that was it. So that was pretty simple. The second issue I had, you guys, and it was just as the, uh, the, the people on the forums had explained to me, was the, um, the front sway bar end link on the driver's side was loose. That was another thing that was in tight in the spec from the uh, factory. Now that loose uh, front end uh, sway bar end link would create just a weird kind of, an, kind of a dull knocking noise from the front of the suspension if you'd go over sway bars or uh, if you're on the track and you're going over a rumble strip, um, you'd hear just a slight knock. Um, it's usually the kind of thing you'd hear more at lower speed. And again, that was addressed by just effectively having the dealership tighten the, uh, the sway bar end link back up to spec and the car was absolutely silent. Or for most, it would be that way. Now with me, because I ended up discovering the issue on the track, um, which effectively is gonna put force on the end links themselves, I kind of bent the opening uh, of the end link itself open while it was uh, loose so even when they torqued it to spec it was still needing to have the actual part itself replaced so that was a two visit uh kind of issue that i had with the car which was relatively minor um obviously not ideal but relatively minor and the cool thing is that they uh they knew about the tsb um so they, they took care of it relatively easily the first the instruction on the first um attempt is just to tighten it the second attempt is just to change or replace the end link which is i mean even if you had to do it on your own that's pretty uh pretty inexpensive stuff so not definitely not a deal breaker um the one thing i wanted to get into you guys um well actually here let me let me go into the other thing that i had the uh the only other thing i used in thirty six thousand miles of warranty other than again a tsb for the loose uh lugs on the wheel and the sway bar end link was, and again, you guys, this is 37,000 miles. This is the only thing I had replaced under warranty on this car. You see this beautiful little trim piece right here? It says ZL1. That nice little trim piece developed some very small bubbles right here. And I thought maybe it was just kind of some kind of, I don't know, little mark or something like that. So I went to get in, kind of just to kind of rub at it and I found out it was a bubble and then it peeled. So this piece of plastic is the only thing that has been replaced on this car under warranty in 36,000 miles. The other thing, now that we're on the inside, I'm just gonna show you guys. Um, just for reference, you guys, I'm a very big guy. Anybody who's met me in person knows I am uh, larger than your average bear, let's put it that way. I'm about 6'5", 285, 290 pounds uh, larger driver. Now, a lot of the, the wear items, let's say on the interior on this car, because it's so low, and the, uh, the, the, the railing here is so wide, or the, the side section is kind of a side piece here that's gonna make it a little bit harder for the, let's say shorter people to get in and out. Um, you'd think that this would get stepped up on a lot, and it hasn't. It's still pretty good, but again, I'm taller. So this is one thing you'd have to watch out for, but I wanna show people that it hasn't been beaten up, even with all the track time. Now the, really thing, the thing that really impresses me, again, considering my size and my weight, is look at the way the bolsters have held up. There's no wear on these, you guys. In 36,000 miles, I'm always, you know, putting my hand here to get in and out. The chair is not loose. There's no wear, even on the inside. So, I mean, again, the contact points, the materials have gotten a lot better. The design is a lot better. I looked at. The only thing that I would complain about on the inside, to be totally objective, and I'll show you guys this, is just, and again, this is coming from Lexus. It's the, uh, it's the, it's not the fit and finish. The fit and finish is great. Everything's very nice. It's the materials at the top of the plastic or the top of the dash, the plastic, ex uh, excuse me, you guys. Um, it's just a little bit on the cheaper end. Again, it's just, it's a harder plastic. It doesn't rattle. It doesn't squeak. It doesn't make noise, even through the summers in Arizona. Um, and then the, you know, we get the winters now, which will, you know, bring the temperatures in the summer from 120 down to, I don't know, 40. 39 you know 42 a lot in the, in the winter no squeaking no rattles nothing um alcantara steering wheels held up really really well um i do have a special cleaner to clean that and i'll show you guys what that what that cleaner is but again fit and finish everything looks really really nice in here everything's held up really really well um i don't have wear marks on the wheel there's nothing scratched you know nothing coming off or peeling um, which was an issue in some of the earlier Lexus um, IS uh, 
ISFs basically that I had, one of the ones that I had basically, a generation, second generation IS is plagued with uh, interior issues. Um, so that was one thing I was kind of pleased to see in two years of ownership, no issues or wear on the interior. Um, now I did take some notes you guys because I want to make sure I'm very thorough for you guys here. So I want to take a look really quick. Now, yeah, I would say the number one problem I've had with the, my Camaro experience, and this is for anybody out there considering buying the car, whether you're on the German side, Japanese side, uh, you're on the domestic side. Um, and to be honest, it's something I think people should be warned about, you guys. It's, the, uh, it's not the cars. The cars are actually amazing, and they're filled with tech. What I found is that the, the dealership service experience is a disaster. It's a disaster. There's no attention to detail. Um, you have so many different technicians dealing with the same car whenever there's service that need to be required that there's usually a bound to be some kind of miscommunication or error. They also have techs that are uh, paid a lot less so that the, the techs make their money on volume so they tend to speed through things a lot. Um, and I did want to get through that, you guys, because again, the only things I've had with the two TSBs and that plastic trim piece that took me to the dealer um, you know, for repair or something, something actually wrong with the car. The other, and I don't want to say a dozen visits, but a lot of visits basically were, uh, were from basically just dealership error. And I want to go through those two right now, you guys. The, uh, the first issue that I had with, uh, with the dealership, uh, was an alignment issue. And I didn't do in a video on that. The car is set up for track time. So they have to dial in a lot more camber to the front tires. Um, not as easy to see from the front, but or when the wheels are turned a little bit, but they, um, they give you two degrees of front camber as opposed to one, and in the rear it goes to 1.6 instead of one. So it gets a little bit, you just get a little bit more camber. Now, the issue is the techs at the dealership won't communicate with the service advisors, so I would bring the car in for uh, track alignment and then tell them that I wanted two degrees of front camber and the, or camber I should say, and the, um, the technician would actually tell the service advisor, um, I put it into street because that'll wear out too quick. So I had to go back and have it uh, redone, all right? Now imagine having your alignment done, then you go back for a quick oil change before your track day, and the, the oil thing is uh, something I'm gonna touch on here in a second. Um, and then they take a look at your alignment, they see that it's in track alignment, they go, oh my God, the guy needs an alignment, his, way, his alignment specs are way out for street alignment they end up doing another alignment. So they take it out of track. <laughs> that, was, uh, that led to kind of a little bit of an issue because I ended up at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway trying to run a time trial, which I did come in first place, which I was super excited about, but the car was under steering like a pig. It was insane. Um, so again, you have to watch the dealership service, you guys. They're not always as thorough as we would like. Um, other kind of fiascos at the dealership, because I do want to get into this. Um, for convenience, I've been lucky enough to be able to uh, kind of just take care of everything at the dealership, including service and tires. Uh, a lot of times I buy my own tires and bring them in uh, from Tire Rack, so you kind of save some money, and it's just a one-stop kind of thing, just everything's done at the same place. Uh, when they replaced my tires, they scratched my wheels. So again, you might want to consider just leaving the stuff at uh, Discount Tire. I think they do a little bit uh, kind of just more reliable work. You can always request that they torque the wheels by hand. Um, as you can see here, I have a second set. These are actually the original set of wheels that came with the car. I purchased another set for track time from, uh, from a very cool individual, believe it or not, who was building a twin turbo ZL1 for God's sakes. Very cool guy here in Phoenix. Um, so again, you need to watch the, uh, the service text, you guys. You might, have, you might notice you have some issues with the car at the dealership. Um, I have considered either, or I've, I've wanted to tell uh, people viewing, you might want to either consider if you know of a really good, reliable Chevy dealership, you know what I mean, or you're tight with them, that kind of thing, you know the work is good, go with them. Or the other option is if you start experiencing what I've experienced, just take the car to Cadillac. The Cadillac dealership um, kind of platform or the way they set things up, it's a lot more like Lexus. They have kind of higher end certified techs. They don't rush, they get paid a little bit more. And you have one tech doing all the work on the car, whether it's coming in for, you know, brakes, tires, you know, something's wrong with the uh, cooling, um, it's the same guy doing everything. The same guy who will, you know, replace your brake pads is the same guy who's gonna put the, t the car on the, um, on the alignment rack and put tires on the wheels for you. So, um, again, just a little bit more attention to detail. One guy is responsible for all the work and the quality of the work usually comes out a little bit better because they're not rushing. Um, 
Let me see here. Yeah, the other thing that you want to have done if you're gonna if you're gonna be tracking a ZL1 is you're gonna want to switch the car from the dot three fluid that comes with the car from Chevy. You're gonna want to go ahead and switch it up to the dot four. Now that was another issue that I had with the dealership was I had my fluid uh, swapped out from dot three to dot four, and it took them I'm not joking, you guys, six visits to get the fluid in the right way. They weren't reading. Uh, what we call the uh, from the Lexus side the tech stream in the computer like basically the the exact instructions on how to perform the job So they were only bleeding half the valves, which was kind of embarrassing The last and final embarrassing thing that occurred at the dealership again None of this is from Chevy or the car the way it's designed. This is all issue with the uh, service quality uh, the last disaster was they uh, well, before I went to Sonoma Raceway and I, I have been around with the car you guys a little bit I've been to uh, Quite a few of the California tracks. I'm gonna shut the door here because the wind's kicking up. I don't want my pictures to come down. Um, before I took the car to Sonoma Raceway, I had the transmission uh, uh, service because uh, the, the uh, Chevy uh, information on the car will usually dictate that you want to have the car serviced for the transmission uh, right around 30,000 miles or 15 hours of track time. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> when I took the car in, they overfilled the transmission or quote unquote the service tech topped it off. Now when the car, uh, when the transmission's overfilled, the fluid, when it's too much in the, uh, or it's too high in the, uh, the fluid level's too high, excuse me, in the transmission, the fluid is not allowed to aerate, so it can't cool down. So while I'm racing along at Sonoma, I get about maybe five laps in and a good battle with the Corvette Z06. You guys can check out the videos uh, on the channel. Um, the transmission literally overheated. I got the little signal on the, uh, on the dash. Uh, that the transmission overheated, basically said idle engine, just you know, hit the pits, cooled down. The light went off probably within maybe 45, 45 seconds, but then I went out a second session and because I went, I went from Arizona to Sonoma, you guys, so I was going to let it cool down and just do whatever I could before I had to drive all the way back because I didn't want to be there for nothing. But I did end up running the second session, the, the transmission did overheat, but um, what was unique was uh, the second session, it cooled down like seriously you guys it was the same exit i kind of pulled over in the same spot it, it probably the light went off in 15 seconds so it was almost like and i did notice that the uh, in some of the video that the um the fluid was coming out and burning off on the exhaust you could see some of the smoke because i do mount a gopro on the back of the car so you can literally see some of the stuff coming out and burning off on the exhaust um, so it's almost like the, uh, the, the the transmission itself is is designed to have vent, uh, vents on the sides would allow the transmission fluid if it's if it's overfilled to kind of leak out but it's still um, I took it back in after Sonoma they ended up topping it off the right way and I haven't I didn't have an issue so I ran the car right after that at Apex Motor Club in uh, Arizona one of the new tracks here and it was absolutely fine so again it, it, a lot of it you guys you need to make sure that you're having your car serviced the right way um, you might want to ask to have a foreman take care of the car have it done at Cadillac do it yourself kind of a thing if you can um, that's the important thing. That's really the, the, the important main main kind of one of the main messages I want to send in this uh, in this uh, video. Now the other thing I was going to mention for anybody out there who's thinking about buying a ZL1 and you're going to be doing some track time and I, I personally don't see why anybody would drive a car like this and not do track time personally. I, I tell people it's like being Superman and refusing to use your powers. <laughs> it makes no sense. Um, but yeah, a GMparts.com I wanted to give you guys a heads up is a great resource um, for, for pads and rotors. Um, I can literally get you guys the pads and rotors on this car for about 40 to 50%, maybe 45% of what they would cost me at the dealership. So, um, and then and the brakes and rotors on this car, they're, they're massive, you guys. There's no, there's no, no messing around with these. These are basically some of the largest, other than the Ford GT500, some of the largest steel rotors that you're gonna get. Um, it is a Brembo package, so we're not messing around with the cheap stuff. Um, I think I can get each rotor at gmparts.com, I want to say each one's 385, and then you can get the pads for I think 285. So, I mean, realistically, you know, it's an $1,100 brake job if you can do it yourself. Um, if not with service, maybe another 280. Um, but it's still going to be a lot better than getting the parts at the dealership because they're going to hose you, okay? Uh, and all they're going to do is play is, oh yeah, it's a, it's a performance car. These parts are super expensive, and yeah, blah blah blah, bend over basically. So, just a heads up, gmparts.com is a great resource. If you're going to be replacing anything on the car, I did have a situation actually, unfortunately, where I was speed, uh, speeding along from work um, one day on a Friday, and I literally opened it up. I just hit the gas, 
I looked down and there was a bird right in front of me and I ended up, the bird unfortunately went right through here. So I did have to use uh, gmparts.com to get myself a new grill as well as the brake parts. But again, it's a great resource. The whole, the whole grill on the car cost, uh, I think it was 284 bucks. So, I mean, nothing, you know, relative to what, what you, at least what I would think coming from Lexus, that was pretty, uh, pretty mild stuff. So that was pretty impressive. One thing I also did have to replace, but I, I had replaced at the, uh, the dealership, you guys, um, and it wasn't on the, wasn't on the, the uh, driver's side, it was on the uh, passenger front fender liner. At Sonoma Raceway, if anybody's been there, when you're coming into the final uh, turn, I think it's for turn 11, um, as you brake and you're coming down from really, really high triple digit speeds, you're gonna brake, um, there's this huge dip as you're braking, so the tire went up and made contact with the fender liner and tore the rear the rear section of the fender liner. So I did have to have that replaced. Um, uh, obviously not under warranty. I, I paid for that out of my pocket, but I, I believe that was only 194 bucks to have the whole fender liner replaced with installation. So it was pretty reasonable, actually. Um, let me see here, you guys. Like I said, I took notes because I want to be thorough for you guys here. Um, now, I want to get into the practical side, okay? And away from the dealership kind of experience, which uh, leaves a lot to be desired. The uh, practical side, I want to get into you guys, just, just living with the car every day. The car um, with the ZL1, non-1LE, you don't have the uh, Multimatic dampers, so you have the, I think, a little bit fancier, or we'll call it newer school. I'm not going to say fancier, because those DSSVs are pretty, uh, pretty impressive. But the cool thing is you get with the magnetic ride, you have the ability to change out the comfort in the car, right? You can go to tour mode if you want to cruise. Um, I run... I run my own business, you guys. I do very long days at work. Sometimes you're coming home and you just don't want to run your mouth, uh, and you want to just you don't want to speed. You just want to chill. So it's kind of cool to have the uh, the, the ability to kind of set the car in tour mode, and the car literally you can feel it more in the rear. And I'm pretty sure GM designs it that way um, because we have the uh, the owners who like to drag race. But literally, when you have it in tour mode, you can actually literally feel the rear start to to float. Uh, over bumps. It's, a, it's, it's not a bad feeling, especially after a long day and you're tired. So I do like the magnetic ride on the car. Um, I can imagine on the track, the uh, Multimatic dampers are going to be a little bit, obviously, uh, maybe a lot of bit, uh, just it's going to give you a little bit more of that performance, let's put it that way. I still think more of the difference is the R comps. Um, I think the, uh, the Multimatic dampers are going to be a firmer, obviously. Um, I've heard the spring rates are three times as high. I've read that in articles. So that is going to give you a lot more performance, but at the same time, you're going to lose a lot of that daily drivability, which is a concern for me as a uh, new massive Camaro fan um, and somebody who wants to maybe trade this one in for a 1LE uh, in about a year. So that's one thing personally that I go back and forth, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. When they consider the ZL1 versus the ZL1 1LE, you're concerned about comfort, uh, daily drivability, and I do daily drive this thing every single day. And that's how we've come to 37,000 miles in two years. And I think it's been two years and two months now with, uh, with my baby here. I call her Carmela, you guys. So again, uh, I mean, for every, for every owner, any prospective buyer out there, um, the main thing is just kind of, are we willing to compromise, um, you know, track performance for daily drivability? Um, or are we willing to compromise the daily drivability for track performance, which is what you're gonna get with the 1LE. And again, to each his own. Just depends on how you're going to use the car. Um, personally, for me now, after uh, after two years of uh, and 16 track days, uh, I think I'm ready to kind of step up. My only issues with the car on the track, you guys, is at the limit. And again, you have to realize that this car is designed for total, like it's a total package, right? They want it to be daily drivable. It's a drag racing car. It's a road course car. So again, it ha because it has to kind of be. I don't want to say the jack of all trades. Kind of they. They set up the magnetic ride to be, again, slightly compromised, right? So you have the comfort. Um, but at the same time, when you get the car on the track and you're really, really pushing, and remember you guys, I've done 16 track days with the car, so I'm more than comfortable with the car at the limit. Um, the car tends to, it starts to understeer in the super, super, super tight turns, even with the track alignment. Um, the car tends to oversteer after about five, six laps because the tires themselves get greasy. Um, the tires, like I said, like everybody always says, are the only thing really making contact with the uh, road, right? So we're limited by the tire temperature range that the tires are going to run. Now, with the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3s, which are the ones that you, you get the 20-inch size on the ZL1, um, 
it's it's a it's not a uh, an Arcom tire. It's an extreme performance tire. So again, it's still one notch below an Arcom, but one notch over your standard summer tire. So it's going to handle heat really really well because effectively it's a track it's a street tire for the track, but it's not a track tire for the street like you'd have with the. Uh, the ZL1 1LE, which, uh, which would come with the R comps or the uh, F1 Eagle Supercar 3Rs. Sorry about that long name, you guys. But those are obviously going to operate at a much higher temperature range, which is also an issue on the street because you don't have the temperatures a lot of times for the, car, for the tire to give you the kind of grip that you want. And that's why every now and then it's unfortunate, but you'll see one of these ZL1 1LEs. I saw one literally yesterday on Instagram, you guys, and I think it had 40 miles and it was totaled. Um, because basically somebody's going out with their brand new car, they want to celebrate, they get on it, and they ended up wrecking the car basically because the tires are operating way below their intended uh, temperature range. So you have to realize that if you're going to buy a car like this, this is a driver's car. It's not the kind of car you want to give to your little brother, uh, let your sister drive all the time. It, this is a car for people who know how to drive, who know how to respect the power, and realize too that there's a lot of physics involved when you're operating a car at this level. Um, you cannot just bang on the thing when it's wet or when the thing's, uh, when it's, when it's uh, real cold outside, that kind of a thing. You need to respect the power and the, and the way it puts its power down. Now at the same time, it does have an advanced traction control system, stability control. Um, so it does allow you to kind of get on it and manage some of the traction, but it's not to say that you can't make a stupid mistake and wreck the car. This is a true driver's car. Um, so again, you have to respect the power. That's the main, one of the main missions, uh, uh, one of the main messages, excuse me, of the video as well, you guys. You are going to drive this kind of a car. Um, I do think that the ZL1, the non wenali 10 speed would meet the needs of probably 95% of the uh, people looking for the car. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, with the magnetic ride, you have the daily drivability. It's still one hell of a performance machine, you guys. Um, in the two years I've run the car on the track, I've, I've, I've been in first place in I think three time trial races. One of the uh, time trial competitions is actually at Auto Club, and we had a Ferrari 458 GT3 Challenge Series race car. And I took that car down, passed it, and beat its lap time on 20 inch street tires. <laughs> Um, one more thing I wanted to get into about the tires, you guys, is Tire Rack, as many of us know, uh, is a great uh, resource for tires. Just a heads up, the tires on this car, because I think the uh, Chevy's got it set up to same tire on the uh, some of the normal, or we'll call it the more regular Camaros, the V8 non-supercharged Camaros. I think because they all run the same 20-inch tires, and they're, uh, they're made in, in America, they don't have the tariffs and tax on them, basically. You can get a set of brand new 20-inch Supercar 3s at your door for $1,079, which is amazing. Literally less than $1,100, you got a brand new set of tires. And you're going to need that discount because the car goes through tires essentially, and I know this sounds a little shocking and alarming, but literally every oil change, which is roughly for me and the way I drive, is about maybe every 6,000 miles, 7,000 miles, you're going to replace all four tires. If it's not at the oil change, it's going to be right after or right before, depending on how much track time you're doing. Now, again, you guys, I do a regular track time. I do about eight, seven to eight track events per year. I know that's way abnormal for most, basically. So again, just you know, be aware. If you're gonna track, you're gonna burn tires. If not, you're gonna be fine. You're probably gonna be fine. I've had some uh, members in some of these forums tell me they can get 10, 15,000 miles out of a set of tires, which still absolutely blows my mind. I have no, I have no idea how the hell anybody does that. Um, overall, you guys, when I first got the car, one thing I wanted to mention, I did have a defect in the paint, which was right here. I ended up having to polish that out. Um, one more issue that I did have with the car, and I'm sorry, I forgot this. Um, the bumper, when I first bought the car, was misaligned. This part here was sticking out. Um, when I first bought the car, I was a little bit concerned about leaving it at a body shop with some young kids, so I didn't want anybody messing with the car. Um, so I about. It's not even about, it was literally about, I think it was 20 miles before my warranty expired. I had to have them take the bumper off and put new clips on it. It did help, but it's still not absolutely perfect. Let's put it this way, it's not, it's not completely flush, but it's a lot better. Um, just for reference, anybody out there looking for uh, Camaro ZL1s or even standard Camaros, I want you guys to know it's not a clip issue, is what they tell you. It's a clip inside underneath the bumper um, uh, and behind the, uh, the trunk. 
uh, the clip uh, the profile of the clip doesn't fit the bumper opening really well so it allows this to open up the reason this is opening up if you actually look at it online and you, you start reading the stuff is it's a thermal issue actually so some of the it's the darker colored cars that are going to pick up more heat and that that it's going to cause the bumper to expand the gap is here and it literally allows the bumper to expand out so just a heads up you guys if you're looking for a zl1 or even a camaro and it's in the summer or the spring i need you to take a look at the gaps on both sides here and make sure that they're flush because you might find that you're buying the car in the winter right or the fall or something like that it's nice and cold outside everything looks perfect and you get it in the summer you leave it in the in the sun or out in the heat and you come out and you're like why the hell are the bumper sticking out or the the pieces on the side are sticking out it won't fit flush here so you need to watch that um those were the only two defects that i had in the car when i first got it it was bumper uh, misalignment in the rear and then i had that very small it was literally about a quarter size um paint defect here and what it looked like is it looked like somebody found a defect at the uh, at the factory in the clear coat and they wet sanded it but they didn't polish it out so there was some it was literally looked like a perfect circular kind of pale i don't know scratch basically i just literally polished it the first night i got it and everything was fine um the front end of the car i would recommend highly if you're going to be doing track time you guys that you make sure that you get this front end clear broad the car um, does have good paint on it but not the best so it will chip and scratch um, like any other car will to be honest if you're on the track so i would highly highly recommend clear broading the car uh, if you can see here it's, it's kind of hard to see but there's uh, you get the line here um, but when you don't clear bra the car all over the let's say you do the full wrap which a lot of people might think about doing until they find the, the, the price of the, the wrap is three grand. I'm going to show you guys something really quick here. Um, if, you're, if you weren't going to do the whole wrap on the car, one section of the car that I would highly recommend that you have covered, or you can always order track armor online. And track armor is basically, it's like a, it's kind of removable clear bra. You want to make sure that you clear bra this part. Now from the factory, I had this on it. I didn't add this one. I had the... Um, uh, actually, you know what? I did have this installed when I had the clear bra done. So yeah, you want to have this. This is a minimum, okay? The second thing I'd recommend is absolutely, if there's any way they could do this fender, you're going to want to do it because you get little spots like this. And those are annoying. Not ideal. Not a big deal. It's nothing that you, can, you can't fix with a little Dr. Color Chip. Um, but again... Always ideal if you can. Now the only issue with the clear bra, you guys, it does get pretty expensive pretty fast. It's kind of annoying. You get a brand new car and you just put a down payment on it and all that stuff, and now they want you to, you know, they want you to drop three grand on it for a clear bra. And then they're always, of course, encouraging you to go ahead and do the uh, ceramic coating as well. It's like by the time you walk out, it's like four grand or something like that, or 3,500 to get the car totally wrapped. And again, that's after you just did your down payment and all the other stuff on the car. So, um, so again, if you're going to do it minimum. Um, you want to make sure you have the front done. Um, you can always do the sides with a little track armor. If you don't know what that is, you guys, you might want to look it up online. It's really good stuff. Um, yeah, and it, it's, uh, it's really cool because it's removal. It's very, very easy to use. Now, um, the final issue or final thing I wanted to leave you guys with is that the, uh, the car, the, the Camaros always have, when you, when you look at uh, JD Power and Associates, which kind of bothers me, they're always indicating that the Camaro is the least reliable Chevrolet product. And it just wows me. Um, Cause like I said, although I have had, you know, some minor quality issues, it's not a deal breaker. Whereas Lexus is ranked number one. And man, I've had so many recalls with my Lexuses, uh, TSVs, not just TSVs, we're talking TSVs for cooling and braking. Um, my, my Lexus ISF had a, uh, an engine cooling issue like where the uh, valley plate on the inside of the motor was leaking coolant out of the motor and that was twenty three hundred dollars i got lucky that they, i had the warranty but that's kind of frustrating um and again that was at less than sixty thousand miles um this car has been completely reliable like i said other than the two tsbs and the uh the issue with the uh the plastic piece uh, upon delivery, I would recommend if you're going to get one, even if it's used, just go over the car with a, with a flashlight. I know it sounds silly, but you definitely want to go over it just to make sure um, that the car is in good shape. Um, the one thing you might want to also watch for, like I said, is make sure that your bumpers are flush, you guys, because that is kind of annoying. And body work is, is, is not something that's always easy to take care of, even though it is a simple just popping off the bumper, but it's there for a week and you're always wondering what the hell they're doing with your car, right? 
Um, not a very comfortable feeling here. Now the verdict, you guys, after this long review, and I'm sorry it is uh, a little bit longer, but like I said, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth. The, the verdict is, you guys, I would purchase another Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 in a second, and in fact, I plan on doing exactly that. Um, in hopefully less than a year, um, I will be looking into purchasing a ZL1 1LE. Um, with the amount of track time that I do, I do think I am the, the kind of the appropriate customer, let's say, to, the, to kind of make the, the, the sacrifice in some of the ride quality and the NVH issues that you might come with the, uh, with the Multimatic dampers, but just to move up uh, and grip. Um, now, although I am very yeah, tempted, but also tempted to be honest, because of the Multimatic dampers, to actually stick with another ZL1, okay? Um, it's gonna be a hard decision. And, uh, and, and I know it's aesthetic, you guys, but I absolutely hate the black hood on the 1LE. I know there's guys out there with the ZL1s like this, and they literally have their, car, their hoods wrapped in that. It looks horrible to me. It looks like garbage. I can't stand it, man. And the fact that it's matte, it just makes it worse. The other thing too that I don't like about the 1LE, even though I'd like to own one, is the fact that this, the rocker panels here, they go from this nice shiny black and they make it this ugly matte. You also get black mirrors. Um, the wheels are no longer shiny. They're 19s and they're smaller. Um, so again, you're gonna trade some of the, uh, the aesthetics for performance basically here. I just don't know why they couldn't do it and done a nice, nicer looking uh, wheel than they did on the uh, 1LE. Um, the other thing I don't like about the 1LE is just the, um, it's just like I said, the way everything is just matte. I don't know why things can't be shiny and fast. Or maybe I'm just old. That's probably what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I do plan on uh, switching up to the 1LE. Um, I want the added, you know, grip on the track. I think that will kind of address some of the uh, understeer issues that I've had. Um, and also allow me to, to dial in the extra alignment because with the Multimatic setup and the setup on the 1LE, you can add instead of, uh, I think up to 2.2 or, I wanna say 2.2 or 2.1 degrees of negative camber on the front, you can go up to 3.7, which is insane. I believe uh, Chevrolet recommends 3.2. Um, you're obviously gonna wear your tires out pretty quickly, but I mean, I can only imagine the kind of front end grip you're gonna have between that R-Comp tire and, those, and also the larger tires lighter wheels uh, and then all that extra uh, camber i mean that's that's going to be an amazing an amazing uh, feeling i think so kind of uh you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to trade up some of the aesthetic beauty on the car i think for the uh for the extra performance what i plan to do with my personal one le if i do end up picking up one next year is i'm going to have them immediately take that shit off i oh god i can't stand that black wrap it's horrible um <laughs> And then the other thing too is you want to immediately just have them, have them do the track alignment. Um, with the track alignment, which is kind of cool, you guys, which you'll notice. Let me come on this side so I have better lighting. Um, with the track alignment, the nicer thing too is it actually makes the car look a little bit lower. The, the front of the tire tips in, it just makes the car look slightly lower. The handling is better. And it doesn't wear the, the, the front tires out as quickly as I think a lot of people might think. It's really toe that wears them out if they're in the wrong setup. <clears throat> it's not the camber as much, or camber, I should say. So... Um, again, just things to consider as a buyer, you guys. Um, the other thing too that's gonna help us quite a bit if you are shopping for a car, for a ZL1, let's say, is the new eighth generation uh, Corvette is gonna be out and that's gonna kill the pricing on these things. Um, already as it is, you guys, just for reference, if you're gonna be shopping for one of these cars, it's always better to shop in the cooler times of the year. And if you're uh, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more, just able to kind of shop online and you're, you're a little bit more comfortable with that. If you shop for these cars in cold states, Pennsylvania, you know, North Carolina, anything back east where it's snowing, um, literally in December, November, you can pick up these cars for anywhere between eight to $15,000 off sticker. And that includes the ZL1 1LE. Um, so the value is there if you're gonna look in the winter. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. In fact, I, I plan on shopping, um, I think the best deals I found online this year I'm, I'm looking for reference compared to next year's uh, the Pennsylvania dealerships. They tend to have super deep discounts. Um, but like I said, you guys, after 10 years of Lexus and two years of Chevy, I am so all about the Chevy, just performance, the reliability, the power. Um, like I said, it, it, the car hasn't been free from issues, but uh, I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. It's an, ex an old expression, and it's even a, it's, it's almost become a meme nowadays. Um, the expression basically is, is you can have performance, reliability, or build quality, right? You only get two out of three you can pick. So 
With Lexus, you get the build quality and the reliability. There's there's very little performance. It's it's generation or maybe a generation and a half behind. But yeah, the uh, the build quality is there. You're not going to have the slight issues with the bumper. You know what I mean? You're not going to have a slight issue with the bubbling at the bottom. Maybe this is super minor stuff. Okay, because in my from my perspective, what I like to do with my cars. It's the performance and the power, right? That's what makes me happy enough and satisfied enough to deal with any minor uh, quality issue or build quality issue, like a minor thing with the paint. Do you see what I mean? A, a misalignment with the bumper. Um, the two TSBs, and the TSBs, like I said, didn't bother me because they knew about them right away. So I haven't had really a bad, a bad experience with the car. Uh, if anything, I've had more of a bad experience with the dealership. That's really it. So like I said, you guys, great car, very reliable, very powerful. The performance, I mean, aspect, uh, the, the, the package is unbelievable on the track or the street, or even if you like to drag race, um, it's an absolute great car. And I wanted everybody to know out there, especially the German and JDM guys uh, know that something has changed over here. These things have gotten a lot better, a lot more reliable. You guys should absolutely take a look at it. Whether it's the ZL1, a Camaro SS1 LE, the new Corvette, take a look. The, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a myth or kind of a legend that's kind of stuck in all of our heads. And I know, I know what it is. You know, they're garbage, they break down, they're not reliable. Um, obviously, you guys, if they're still in business, something's changed and something has changed. Uh, and I can tell you that firsthand. And I'm not gonna say I, I didn't come to Chevy with apprehensions, but my God, man, I am so much happier that I went and I had the bravery <laughs> to kind of make the switch. What a great car. I hope you guys enjoy the review. Um, if you guys do, make sure you smash that uh, like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. I've got a link at the top of the page. Lots of cool track videos and track posts uh, all, all the time, in fact. You guys have a great day and I'll catch you guys on the next one. You take care.